today on the TMZ Podcast. Welcome to the TMZ Podcast. Derek and Eric here. How you doing? Good. Welcome back. Yeah. Eric's been away for a little while, yeah. but I don't do chit-chat with you. I get you right down to business. Nobody wants chit-chat. Let's get to the stories. <laughs> we don't need it. Uh, big news. The big news of the day is Adidas has now terminated its partnership with Kanye West. This is gigantic. It is. Uh, there have been rats fleeing from the ship for a while. Balenciaga walked away from him. Uh, Vogue did. This is all in the wake of his, you know, directly and obscenely anti-Semitic comments. Yep. He's been on this rant after the White, White Lives Matter shirt that he wore. That didn't do it. So he upped the ante to there's a Jewish cabal that has been yeah. ruining my career. And, and, you know, you said Balenciaga and Vogue quickly ran away from him. Yes. Adidas had not yet. And big over, money involved with Adidas for that several is not days. Necessarily involved it was you know boycott Adidas became a trending hashtag. People were like you know you got to be done with this guy, and now they have, and they say it will cost them two hundred and forty six million dollars. Yes, but you know what's kind of gross? The mo this is when you sort of hurt yourself as a company by waiting as long as they did and doing financial analyses and crunching the numbers, and it came to two hundred and forty six million. You don't get the the benefit of terminating the deal that you would have got if you immediately terminated and then looked at the numbers and the financial consequences, but we just simply morally couldn't stand with <laughs> Kanye West. Now you've waited. You look like it's a, a balancing act between morality and, and, and you know, fiscal well, you know, yeah, responsibility. It, it like and now you don't get the juice from walking away and taking a stand. And especially by putting the number out there to make them look like, hey, look, we're going to lose this much money. Well, because, like you said, it took a couple days. Yes. Were they like, Ugh, well, if we cut with Kanye, we'll lose 246. Right. But if we stay with him, this boycott might cost us $350 million. Yes. So it, it seems like. Or is there a number they could have seen where we can't cut ties? When you say yeah. we're going to lose 246, you're telling your shareholders, we'll be fine. We're a multi billion dollar company. $250 million is no small amount of money but we can recover however if it was higher we might have had to like sort of find a way to work yeah. with kanye it's just bad messaging and you know look i want to give adidas his due adidas is a publicly traded company its stock is tanking today this is big news well that's what i was going to say the the ownership of adidas and I, there. and I don't know this maybe it's different than i imagine it's bigger than balenciaga or vogue maybe we're considerably don't have, bigger than we don't have people. one or a couple people who can just unilaterally say you know like i'm sure if the editorial yeah. staff at vogue is like we're done with kanye that's easy. That's right. Adidas can't just do that. Right. And you have a responsibility to your shareholders. Is, is the point you're sort of making is they, they don't have the ability to just say it's over. They have yeah. to go through the proper channels that a company has to. They have to put things to votes. They have to convene the board of directors and so forth. So these things do take time. I think the call was quite easier. They Quite easy. They could have done it more quickly than they did. And the public pressure mounted. And then they ultimately did it. And they're not getting the same sort of traction out of it yeah. as the other companies. Because Balenciaga, to their credit, it was also very closely associated with Kanye. Now, they didn't have as many lines of shoes. They weren't Yeezys, but those but still, two names he was, were He was were sort tight. of the brand ambassador. Yes. And that was a big hit to them. But and you know, also for Adidas, it sh we should point out, the, the history of the company. Here's the other big point. They're a German company. The founder of Adidas was a Nazi. Yes. Like, or at, like, at, at the very least, a sympathizer. But like a literal like World yes. War II actual Nazi. They should have fallen over themselves yes. to... Uh, distance themselves from these kind of comments because after World War II, that Germany as a country purged itself of Nazis. So obviously they have this association, but they are the country that was most on top of getting Nazism out of their country. They're like, wow, we messed up. Yes, we <laughs> really need this. to just make sure this never happens because our people are susceptible yeah. to believing these kind of ideas. We purge it from our society. So you would think they'd, they'd follow themselves. Now, here's what I want to ask. This is a big deal. Kanye kind of saw it coming. He indicated in one of his inner, his one of his sort of impromptu te uh, you know, press conferences. Yeah, he just stood outside just, and just talked to a bunch of camera he, people. He saw the writing on the wall a little bit. Um, he has been saying, though, that all these cancellations and all of these severing of his business ties. Now, this is an old trope to say this proves my point. Obviously, yeah. once you bring the Jews into the conversation, real bad things happen to you in business. And he's saying all these terminated partnerships are because what I'm saying is true about Jewish business people. Is that, that's this such is a backwards thing. So backwards. It is. If, if, if a white person's like, oh, you know, like black people are horrible, black people this, and then you get banned from black companies, that doesn't prove your point. It, right. it proves you were awful and racist in the first place. Of course. Like, that makes no sense to me. And remember, to your point, Adidas is a proudly German company yeah. uh, in its origin uh, that was founded by at the very least, Nazi sympathizers and potentially Nazis. So to say that some Jewish cabal is running Adidas, obviously, is a much different company now, and it's a big corporation. There are many Jewish people who work at Adidas. I'm not trying to say that. But this is the, the way the mind works when you believe this sort of toxic stuff 
is gross. We haven't. It's not like he invented something new, saying, "Ah, oh, this proves my point." This is something that has been trotted out time and time again. When people say yes. anti-Semitic things, they say, "If bad things happen to me, it proves my point." No, it's it proves horrendous. you said the bad things. It just proves you said <laughs> the bad thing. That. And we just need to. We're at the stage now where it is his business deals are drying up. We're starting to choke the oxygen from Kanye West as he's as his financial source resources sort of dry up. He's got a lot of money. He's not going in the poorhouse. No, he's fine. Uh, but he is sort of entering this phase where he's being isolated. Um, you know, he's not as big a part of the national conversation. He's not in as many sort of, uh, you know, companies that you're familiar with. He, his music is not sort of popping right now or anything like that. And I think you're seeing him drift into not obscurity. He, he's too famous to be. Obscure, no, he will always be. But famous he's going to be a respected. marginalized figure. And and that's a little worrisome because, you know, Kanye's always had his issues, his yeah. entire public life. But this we've really seen this ramp up these, these just off the wall things since he and Kim split. Yes. And I think he felt a little isolated from that. And he said, you know, I was cut off from my children. And that sort of drove him into a kind of a deeper spiral, it seemed. And then as he cornered, becomes more isolated, what happens? It, it, it feels like a ticking time bomb right now. Th- th- this is already exploding right yeah. now, but he will be cornered. And I don't think he meekly goes. I think he starts lashing out more. I think you see this ramp up. I'm not sure how you ramp up from here. The rhetoric is as hot as you can make it. No, I don't think quite. he's a violent person or anything no. like that. But Kim has now directly spoken out against the anti-Semitic remarks. He is really on an island. He's going to be isolated from his family. He's isolated in the business world. I assume the music world is going to be very, very similar uh, in, in its treatment of him. And it's going to be hard to claw his way back. And I don't see him doing it. I see him lashing out further. So, yeah, I, who knows? And, we'll and you know, real quick, just because I know people always want to say, like, yep. you know, oh, there's no freedom of speech anymore. He can't say what he wants. Again, there's consequences. There is not freedom from consequences. He is not in jail because he can say whatever he wants. But also all these companies and all these people are free to want nothing to do with him. That's right. And by the way, that's how it works. He has the freedom to go, uh, you know, depending on how these contracts work and who owns the IP of Yeezys and so forth. But he certainly has the freedom to go start his own business. You know, they terminated the partnership. He can uh, go to a manufacturer who is willing to work with him and make some shoes and see how well they sell. I don't think this was some grand scheme to get out of a deal with Adidas. I've heard some rumblings of that. That's like uh, we talked about this before. That's like cutting your arms off to get out of playing a game of catch with your dad. Yes, yeah. you've gotten out of <laughs> How much the do you game hate of your catch. dad? Jeez. <laughs> but now you have no arms. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think he did that because now he's considerably less popular. He may yeah. sell some shoes to some really oh, he'll still, he has an audience. people. He still has a, he has a fan base for sure. But that audience is going to be weird to be around because the people who are sticking with him through thick and thin and are blind allegiance at some point, he's going to wake up and look around and be like, oh, the types of people who like me now are the or not, worst because, of the worst. Because he loves, he's a narcissist. He loves adulation. Oh. As long as they keep giving it, He'll do whatever to he keep getting it. unquestioning loyalty, and he's yes. going to get it because he's putting people to the test. Yes. Um, let's move on to a, a very sad story. Yeah, John. Brittany Griner uh, still in prison in Russia, and she had an appeal to, to get out of this nine-year sentence, at least have it reduced, because yes. her, her team was arguing this is you know, a grossly unfair sentence for having hash oil. Yes, uh, it which been, she admitted to bringing in, she but admitted. said she didn't intentionally break any law. Very strange argument, but yeah. she did bring in hash. Uh, nine years for that seems pretty extreme. Incredibly stiff. And, and so that's been denied now, unfortunately. Uh, the appeal denied, so I don't know, you know, you're the lawyer here, are there... Legally, what avenues are left to her? Anything? In America, we have nearly a, sort of a system of appeals that feels endless to a lot of people. Yeah. You just hear appeal, appeal. There's at least two levels. Typically, you have an appeal to an appellate court, and then you have an appeal to a Supreme Court, which has discretion whether to take it. I don't know exactly how it works in Russia. Then there's all sorts of collateral appeals, and you know, habeas corpus is an entirely different Now nah, you're using too much Latin now. So there's a lot of appeals <laughs> in the American justice system. What goes on in Russia, I, could, I think is probably considerably more truncated. I don't think yeah. you have as many avenues. I, I think, I think as Americans, we have different. our idea of what the Russian legal system is, and maybe that's fair or not. I don't know, but it seems like they can kind of do what they want. Yeah, there's video of her during this appeal where she just seems deflated. She's sitting it's in a prison cell. She's standing there. She's sitting down. When the, Amer- when the American justice system, you feel like you have a shot. Sometimes you feel like the case is, you know, the deck is loaded against you, but the justice system works in such a way that there's a possibility. You get an OJ acquittal. Strange things Something. happen in the American justice system. Bill Cosby sometimes. got out on technicality. Bill Cosby. There, there are ways. There's avenues. There's very smart lawyers. You can get you can get pardons from presidents. You can get 
Exactly. You know, there, there multiple are multiple avenues. There are lots of places you could go. In the Russian justice system, when she is, you know, Putin would never say this, but she's at least a hybrid political prisoner and someone who broke uh, a law in Russia. I do believe she broke a law in Russia, and there's consequences for and breaking I think laws the, in other countries. I mean, countries. we have some, some oddly harsh penalties in this country sometimes, but, but, nine but not years Russia. And, and For personal hash oil. It wasn't an amount that she was going to distribute, anything like that. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's horrendous to watch this in the modern era. He, you know, Putin is obviously involved in 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 a war right now with Ukraine. That's He's obviously factoring into <laughs> his treatment of Brittany Griner, given the Amer given America's position on that conflict. It's it's hard to watch. This is a woman who is just like a pawn. It, you know, it, she, she is. really is subject to the whims of larger forces at work. And uh, now the sentence is nine years. Uh, maybe there are other avenues of appeal. I don't see this changing unless the political landscape changes in some dramatic fashion, which I don't see happening no. in and, the and near you future. Wonder, and she's just sitting in a prison. Like you said, you know, you know, Putin, for all the things he's got going on right now, is very clearly aware of who Brittany Griner is and what the situation of is. Of course Because it's is. an international incident. And Biden's administration has said they're open to a prisoner swap or something so far, at least publicly what they're saying, to get her back. Which will have its own consequences. There's Which talk will of also, a guy named the Butcher or something like that. Or the Merchant like of the Death. The Merchant of Death, yeah. yeah. But so if they offered that and that hasn't been accepted, then what does Putin want? Because clearly he would want something. Exactly. And, and there have been makes offers, you wonder, there have been negotiations. He knows who this person is. He so may say what? I'm distracted with bigger fish, and he is, to be to be fair. He absolutely but is. He knows who this is, and he knows he can address this, and he knows he has leverage by keeping her in a prison in I'm the saying, so, so prime what, of her life. So what then does he want? Which is kind of frightening. It's it's terrifying. If the merchant of death guy wasn't enough to get her out. It's terrifying. I and, and I don't want to like sort of uh sort make a make a she is thirty two years old, I believe. This is her life. You know, she's a she's an athlete. She's a professional athlete. A nine year prison sentence ends her career. She will Absolutely. come out of there as a 41 year old person. I, I don't think it works like the American prison system where you get out on good behavior and all this stuff. If she has a nine year sentence and they want to keep her for nine years. Maybe in Russia, they keep you for nine years and she'll walk out a different person with no basketball career. No. And, and the and remainder of her she's, life. To she's deal married. With. And, you know, I would hope, you know, her wife will will wait for her. Yes. But, but that's, knows, that's that's so rough on anybody. That's you know no judgments on anything. Like it's just it's an awful situation. It's it's absolutely awful. I don't see it sort of changing in any meaningful way. It's hard no. to keep these things in the news. I'm glad we're talking about it here. Her her wife is trying to keep sort of public pressure, but because it's once, human once she's nature forgotten, to like hear the story and yeah. then move on. That's how our news cycles work. And and once the story disappears, then she becomes forgotten in the she's just a prisoner. public consciousness. Then she's just in Russia until what twenty thirty one. Jeez, it's it's remarkably bad. Yeah. Um, let's move on for now to uh, Jimmy Corden, James Corden, <laughs> my also favorite bad, but guy. a lot lighter. Uh, all right, so here's where we are in the James Corden saga. <laughs> the owner of Bal Balthazar uh, posted you it's know a New York restaurant, a, a famous New York restaurant. Uh, you know, populated by celebrities, fancy food. Uh, you never see this, but that owner posted a nasty review of James Corden. And he said, this guy's <laughs> been here and on at least two occasions berated servers. Here's two specific incidents I'm talking about. One involving a heron food, one involving eggs that weren't prepared properly that upset he, he and his wife. Uh, there was an apology. He said that prompted an apology from James Corden, sort of a groveling. I'm so sorry that this happened. And what can I do to make it better so that I'm no longer 86 from Balthazar, which is the restaurant he obviously likes. Yeah. Uh, then the Balthazar sort of owner said, oh, OK, uh, you know, uh, I feel bad. Now that I've come after James Corden causes hoopla, the 86 is off. He's welcome back in the restaurant that hung his servers out to dry. Very odd situation. Now James Corden is on his show and in his opening monologue can't avoid the elephant in the room. I mean, he yeah. has been at the he center has to talk about of this. news. He has to talk about it. And in his open opening monologue, here's what he said. So my wife explained uh, that, that she has a, a serious food allergy. As her meal came wrong to the table the third time, in the heat of the moment, I made... I made a sarcastic, rude comment, right, about cooking it myself. And it is a comment I deeply regret. Like, I understand. I love the staff there. I hope I'm allowed in again one day. So I'm, when I'm back in New York, I can go there and apologize in person, which is something I will absolutely do. Okay, couple things here. <laughs> you have here. feelings about this. I've got very, very strong <laughs> feelings about James Corden. First, first and foremost, uh, he buffers his apology 
at the outset and the way he buffers it to sort of it's not a full like, uh, you know, I'm sorry if you're feeling bad, but he's no, trying to contextualize bad. it. And I don't think that's the way you started an apology by saying my wife has a horrific food allergy. What he's saying is if my wife ate these, it was supposed to be an egg yolk omelet. Yeah, no white whites. omelet. It was supposed to be all yolks and apparently got brought to their table with some remnants of whites in it. And if his wife has an egg white food allergy, I can understand. Look, I order an egg yolk omelet, send it back. Sending food back is not in and of itself bad. If it's not what you ordered, you you may do it. I typically don't do it. I just nah, sort you're of suffer risk. through it. And I don't like to send things back. But that's a personal preference, and I can see. I ordered, I ordered something else. There's also there's a back. way you could approach it if you had to. That's right. But w- the way not to approach it is to angrily send back to a darkened kitchen that you have no access to viewing <laughs> that then prepares another dish for you. That's a bad move for you. It Regardless is. of morals and ethics involved with berating staff who already have a very <laughs> difficult job, it's just not smart. Anyway, he says he does this and says admits to making a snide remark, but he's amping up the stakes. He's saying if his wife had this, she would suffer some sort of food allergy. I'll take him at his word. I still don't think it's part of a an apology tour where the focus should be on how it's explaining why he was upset in the first place. But Correct. he did go on to apologize profusely to the staff and, and that he said he made a rude comment about making the food himself. Yes. Now, why the apology? The apology only because McNally, the owner of Balthazar, Keith McNally, I believe, said something. Yeah. This man doesn't have an apologetic bone in his heart. <laughs> now, his heart Wait, doesn't why have is there, bones. Why is there bones in his heart? That's a, you should see a doctor <laughs> in about his that. body. Uh, he's only profusely, wow, what a, uh, upon reflection, the only reflection he got is that Keith McNally blasted him personally in a very public fashion, and now he feels like if I go to the restaurant, I will, of course, profusely apologize. Now the sort of fraudulent, dripping with Britishisms comes out oh, your of James face. Corden. You have such I, contempt. I don't like this because he does because present he like a as fraud. such a super nice guy. Yes. And this is sort of that, that veneer coming off a bit. Because to me, if you go to dinner with somebody, I mean, almost no matter what happens, if they're rude to a server, yeah, this person, I'm not going to be friends with this it's person. It's a true character test. It really I, is. I see, I'm not, you know, luring you out to dinner to see if you have good character, but I do find and I do observe a person's character in, in how they treat service providers. I assume most people will not be rude to them. That's why it's shocking so. almost if you go out with somebody and they're just, just snide with servers. It's like, it makes wh- me why so, are you like this? <laughs> it makes me uncomfortable to be around. Yeah, and, you got to call that out. Yeah. And uh, okay, I'll, I'll play devil's advocate. In James Corden's defense... <laughs> James advocate, go ahead. If they brought the wrong order yeah. three times... Frustrating. Maybe you snap a little bit. Maybe. The third time, it's like, okay, come on. Yes, I still don't personally snap, but, uh, yeah. but it becomes, I guess, more understandable if you feel like, well, geez, I've said this really matters to well, me, they, he said and that you the, continue there was, to miss the mark. There was the egg white, and then they brought it back, and they got the, the egg yolk part right, but they brought the wrong side with it the second time. I don't know what he said the third time was. I... Yeah, that's that's not good. And, but but again, I mean, I'm just this is not. I'm saying that for the sake of it. But honestly, still, also the server who you are yelling at and being rude to didn't make the food. Yes, they're the they're the the, the middle person there. This so is, you're just taking out your frustration on this person who's just doing their job. This is what I'll say. You've even upset Eric. <laughs> Eric is a model of equanimity. <laughs> Eric is a very measured person. Just don't I treat people like that. A hot take from me or a sort of angry outburst doesn't mean as much as really yeah. disappointing Eric. Eric is the father <laughs> who is like, I'm disappointed in you and it really hurts. That's a good I'm thing the I don't one have who kids. just maybe yells. Here's the last thing I'll say about this. I, I, I have not liked James Corden for a while. I don't think these are isolated incidents. More people have sort of come out and said, this guy has been a monster to me in various ways. Allegations, potentially rumors, but it's sort of confirming what a lot of people have thought about him. It paints a picture. I think everyone in their heart has a struggle. They have a struggle between the monster within <laughs> and the angel, the spirit, of, you know, your, your, your better angels. You are a person whose angels just win out. You, you, you. They, <laughs> yours, they, yours they are on vacation. <laughs> I don't know where yours are. But when the monster wins, this oh. is what you see. And 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 you know he has been able to present this public persona that seems giggly and hey, I'm fun and I'm British. Let's get in the car and sing songs together. But the monster, the monster, the is monster, in the, monster the monster who's in us all. The monster who threatened wins, to cook his own ugly. food. It's ugly. It, it's like, like the Will Smith slap. It's that thing where. There's this image you have, yes, and and nobody's like that all the time. People are human, yes. And I don't, I'm not saying this makes you a horrible, horrible person. When, no, listen, this is about food and and sniping at people. But although being rude to servers is pretty bad, when the image shatters, can you glue it back together? Yeah, I don't think so. It's we'll see. Have cracks. We'll see. All right. Speaking but, of images shattered, yes, <laughs> one of those famous people of that in the last couple of years, Army Hammer. Yeah, 
Uh, it's just getting worse for this guy. Uh, Amex is coming after him now, saying that he owes $67,000 on, on a credit card from 2011. Yeah. Uh, that he's Big never balance. paid off. That's a huge balance, I especially never had a balance like that. he doesn't have acting money anymore. He's selling timeshares now in the Caymans. Uh, I don't know what kind of finances he was left with. Of course, he's from a very wealthy family. Yeah. I don't know what percentage of that he has access to. That's right. A lot of times um, these very wealthy, old money families uh, don't sort of give all the money. There's restrictions on the money. Uh, you know, Remember course. that movie, All the Money in the World, yeah. about the Gettys? Like, they can be very The Hammers were a very, very wealthy family. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, a card, that though, that he had with his estranged wife, Elizabeth. Um, They're going through a divorce. Yeah. So... That's what he says. He says, look, this is a joint card. It'll get worked out. I could. What, he, what he's signaling is, obviously, we can pay this off, but it's in dispute. This is in dispute for a collateral reason between my wife and I, and it'll work itself out in the divorce. We're not just going to hang Amex out to dry, but Amex files these lawsuits as a matter of course. They're not juicy. There's no, like, this is what they bought. Look at all the yeah. lavish spending. It's they just, hey, you owe $67,000. and an unpaid balance, and this is when you open the card. Here's the balance remaining. We have to file this lawsuit. Uh, it'll probably clear itself up, but it is indicative of his life is in a very different situation. One interesting note from this is that the card was opened around 2011 when he was flying high. Yeah, coming it off the social re- network. Yeah, he really looked. He like was lining up leading roles. So many projects, all, good, you know, big budget projects. He had like Lone Ranger. He had all, not all of them panned out, but he was a rising star. He, still he also got paid. did art house projects. He did Call Me by Your Name. It just seemed like he had the world by the reins, and then it just fell apart so quickly. Yeah. Um, and I, I wonder, as you know, he and his wife are, are estranged right now. They're not divorced. I wonder if because he probably has sixty seven thousand dollars to pay it. I, I, would, I would assume. I would imagine. Um, but I wonder if this will become a more contentious thing if they go through with divorce proceedings. If she's like, "No, you owe this money. I That's don't. Right. I want my name off of it." I've yeah. seen. I know friends who've gotten divorced, and little things like that that were were joint things become huge. But it was really one person. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the, you could see this becoming an issue where she says, "I didn't have that." Sometimes a joint card is he well, put my you name on it. Put and my name I didn't on want it. it. He opened an account. I never used the card. Only one card was sent. Look at the purchases. Blah blah blah. So yes, it can become a huge bone of contention. We may see it sort of as a line item in a divorce judgment. He may Who want knows? to just pay it quickly just to be done with it. In that case, I agree. You don't yeah. want this. Um, and let's move on to our last story, which we'll do quickly. I love this. The Firefest uh, founder and. Uh, convict. Yeah, Billy, Billy McFarland. McFarland is teasing a new project. So right now he's not behind bars. <laughs> he served four of his six years. That's he's right. been released. He can do what he wants now. And uh, what does he want to do? Well, he wants to send out a little notification and it looks like this. Hey guys, it's Billy McFarland. You might have guessed, but I'm working on something new. This time, it's a little crazier but a whole lot bigger than anything I've ever tried before. I promise I'm going to tell you everything in November. But before we get there, there's one thing you need to know now. This time, everybody's invited. So he has this treasure map, yes, and then he rips it off of this board, and there's a phone number under it. You call the number, you give them your information, they send you a a clue video. And now, if you remember from the Fire Festival document, multiple documentaries, the, the video that they used to sell the Firefest was these like drone shots of islands and beaches and models in the ocean. The video we send you is drone shots of islands and beaches and models in the water with fish and, and it looks like the exact same thing. Billy McFarlane knows how to drum up intrigue. This is what but he knows. I'm not surprised. Why, when you get out of prison for doing this, why would you immediately go back to doing it again? What do you want him to do? Do you want him to go work Anything at Deloitte? Else. Do you want him to go like take up a, a sort of different profession? He knows what his skill he set is. Still, he can still try and do event planning, but this throwing bad beach festivals. thing, like, this is exactly what you went to prison for. Stop this. And guess what? This will be huge. Is My, he, and, my, my suspicion is that... So there's something on Reddit. Uh, there's a there's Wall Street bets. You ever heard of Wall Street bets? No. There's something called fail porn. So people put not the things that they've won in terms of I made this stock trade and it was huge. They put up their losses, and it's sort of you get a certain social currency from you know being involved with something so stupid that you lost a lot of money. I think there's a a, a group of people That's who people will go to Fire Festival just to be part of a calamity. Like the interest is going and getting the cheese sandwich. <laughs> Does that make sense to <laughs> you? There's, you, a, there's you, a curious. You spend curiosity about tens money and tens, if not hundreds yes. of thousands of dollars, to get that Instagram photo of, of a cheese sandwich. Yes, I was part of Fire Festival too. Uh, I was there at the second disaster. Can you believe it? Yeah. Look at what a dummy I am. I think our culture is there, Eric. I really That's do. That's so sad. That's I, what's wrong with the world. <laughs> I think people going to go to Fire Festival and they're going to be served cheese sandwiches or some variation uh, thereon, and it's going to be cool. 
So you want to go to something you know is going to be deliberately bad because maybe you get interviewed for the documentary. I'll tell you something more. If it's good and a cool festival with lots of musicians, it's a failure. Well, if you he do that. He wants it to be a calamity. If That's you do what that, don't, don't complain when you get subpoenaed. <laughs> fair, enough, fair enough. If you go back to prison for it, not our problem. Uh, that'll do it for us. We'll see you next time. Bye. Nice.